Hello, and welcome to another edition of Education is the Best Medicine. And thanks for watching. And remember, public access is your best bet. Uh, today, we have a discussion around organizations and leadership and vision. Uh, today, we have uh, Dr. Uh, Woody Carter, who uh, uh, runs the Barry Black United Fund, a, one of the premier organizations in our community, one of the premier philanthropic organizations in our community. I'm going to have you talk to him a little bit. Uh, he's going to talk to us a little bit about that. And first, I wanted to say that you know organizational change and leadership are primary. Uh, it's what it's the stuff that organizations are made of. Um, and uh, within this discussion, we have Dr. Carter to talk about the direction uh, and the change in uh, Barry Black Canary Fund. I like the statement uh, on the uh, some of the literature. It says it's not about uh, charity; it's about change. Dr. Carter, thank you. Welcome, welcome, oh, thank ma'am. Thank you for for inviting me. Uh, Dr. Carr, a little bit about your background and how you became the executive director of Barry Black Now Fund. Um, my background is very varied. Uh, graduated second generation of Howard University, uh, graduate of City College of, uh, of New York City, uh, a doctorate in theology, religion, and the arts from the Graduate Theological Union here in Berkeley. And uh, I've done so many things, I don't even know, we wouldn't even have the time to talk about that, okay. but, but let's say that. Uh, um, I came to the fund from actually the American Red Cross and uh, Alameda County Department of Social Services in 1997. Okay. Uh, I noticed that, you know, you're talking and in one of your uh, uh, presentation pieces on the website, and I suggested you do visit uh, Barry Black United Fund's website in order to get a real uh, uh, understanding of the organization. It's a, it's a beautiful website, and I, it, it, I would suggest everyone view it. Uh, you have talked about the need to change the direction of the organization. Uh, and we notice this in a lot of the precepts of the organizational behavior, uh, it becomes a learning organization. How do you feel you're moving uh, the Barry Black Knight Fund, one, to uh, an organization that's remaking itself and a, a learning organization? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's evolved over the years. When I came on board in 1997, we were on the verge of closing. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> And I think in many ways because uh, the organization, for reasons that are, that are, um, that are I understood, uh, and it, what happens to many organizations, not the Bay Area Black United Fund, you wind up chasing the dollar to stay open as opposed to understanding your mission and your vision and, and generating the resources to move that agenda forward. The, the organization had stopped doing that. So it was doing a little bit of direct service, a little bit of... Uh, uh, into what we call int intermediary work and uh, when I came on board it was very important that we clarify our mission and our vision and that's that's evolved and grown over the years that I've been been with the fund. Okay. You know traditional organizations uh, tend to have an authoritarian concept uh, and they tend to have precepts like manage, uh, uh, organize, and control as opposed to a learning organization. Uh, how do you feel each, either structure uh, will help or benefit uh, the organization, and what do you want to move the organization mm -hmm, to? Mm -hmm. that's, a very, that's a very interesting uh, question, George. In some ways, it reminds me of the, um, the fact that as an intermediary organization, we're, we're responsible for bringing resources into the community. I have one, one foot in the foundation arena that is mainstream foundations, local, even regional, even national foundations, and one foot in community. And I need to be able to speak to both, to both constituents, because they are a constituent. They are, uh, they, that's, and, and in many ways, the bulk of our resources come through foundations. So I have to learn to speak their language. And when speaking their language, I do talk about uh, management issues, about uh, financial structure. Uh, but on the other hand, when we look at the issues in our own community right now, it's very important that we do become a learning community. And I think that we have to model what that means. Mm -hmm. uh, in our organization, you know, we have a relatively small staff, so if somebody comes in with an attitude and they keep that attitude for two or three days, it could affect the, everybody in it because we're a small organization. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we try to do is to make sure that we keep the conversation honest. Mm -hmm. Honest meaning that we uh, we're not afraid to talk about and be who we are in community together. We don't have to posture with one another to say, I'm the executive director, you are the this, you are the that. I work with four, mostly women, most of the time, 
uh, many of those women, you know, are very strong women, very intelligent, very uh, lots of good skill sets. Uh, in order to learn how to work with them as a, as a man, uh, I have learned how to become part of a team. And we also, I'd like to thank uh, your supportive staff for allowing you to get here on time and, and all those <laughs> kinds of issues. And we want to thank them in hindsight for doing that. Uh, we know some challenges. You go out to changing shape of the mission, uh, doing business ownership and downsizing, uh, becoming buzzwords in, in organizations such as this nation. Even the culture is changing. Uh, and, and to what regard have you tried to understand these, dynamic, these dynamics and, and help shape, uh, mm -hmm. reshape uh, Barry Black mm -hmm. United Front? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, I never envisioned being the executive director and being a primary fundraiser as a, as a way of making a living. Uh, when I graduated from seminary, um, that, that never entered my mind. But what I find over the years is the work that I did in seminary really has been good preparation for the work that, that I do. Mm -hmm. Uh, because ultimately, uh, vision is a very important thing in our community, especially now when you see the level of apathy and the level of, um, of need that we have in community. To have a positive vi vision of us moving into the future is extremely important and to create a, be, be able to create a framework that allows people to, to grasp a, vi the, a vision enough to be able to say, I want to be a part of that is our challenge. Mm -hmm. well, it's what, both our strength and our challenge. What are the perils of being a pioneer in these fields? Because again, this is a change in institutional thinking. It's a change in, 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 in moving this organization to a learning organization. What are the perils in being uh, that individual? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, frankly, I don't think about the perils in that way, and that might be naive on my part, but I think if I did that, uh, you know, I might not want to get out of bed in the morning. I okay. mean, there's a, there, you know, you, we, can, we can focus on and, and, and illuminate fears that might stop one from moving ahead with one's life. I think that's, that's not where I put my energy. Uh, my energy is more, put up, uh, is more around looking at how, as a leader of organization, I can become a servant in the community. So leadership is very different. It's not authoritarian. It's about you know, how do I fulfill the, the need to be a servant in the community? And I have, and I feel very blessed and very honored to be a part of the Bay Area Black United Fund because um, uh, I have a lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, in speaking about leadership, my background is in organizational behavior, and I know that you did some of the studies and those kind of issues there. And one of the key words was that uh, managers do right things. Managers do things that are right, leaders do the right thing. Mm. How do you find yourself in that mix in terms of, one, dealing with power and the capacity to translate that power in, into reality and action for your organization? Well, I know personally, if we're talking about on a personal level, I, I'm very much rooted sp spiritually. Uh, I have a very deeply rooted spiritual base that gives me, a, a gives me that centers me. Mm -hmm. So I, I move from that perspective in, in whatever I do. Um, and I find that uh, as a result of that, uh, the, my expectations are a little different than if I was there for the money or there for, because I like the command of power. Uh, that's not the issue for me. Okay. You know, some would say that you're a social architect. And uh, in reviewing the webpage, I saw you, you did an article called Creating Something Solid to Stand On. Uh, as one of the vision statements. Could you tell us a little bit about the, that writing and what you meant to, uh, to communicate to folks? Um, as I think I mentioned in the beginning that the, uh, our work and mission and vision has evolved over the time that I've been there, not because, because we've learned from the experience of what it means to be in community. And one of the things that's very clear yeah, in some ways, you could say, on one level, the Bay Area Black United Fund is a fundraiser. We raise money to give to the community. We do that in, in several ways. But on a deeper level, what we're really about is being ethos gardeners. Uh, we're really responsible for looking at how do we transmute the negative images of ourselves into positive ones and to support that through the, through the money we raise to do that, through the partnerships we, we develop with other community agencies, with with foundations, with uh, corporations to do that. Speaking of architects, we know that Dr. J. Alfred Smith 
as well as uh, Congressperson Robert Lee were instrumental in developing uh, uh, Barry Black United Fund. Some would say that this is a religious organization uh, masking itself as a public one. Mm -hmm. How would you answer that to mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. No, I think if we maybe could, uh, no, I, I, first of all, you have to find what religion is. Religion is a, you know, a, a, a community that has a common dogma, has a co common uh, belief system. Uh, we're certainly not a religion. <laughs> Everyone in the organization has their own life, comes to, comes to the barrier of like the United Fund with very different uh, perspectives, uh, and maybe that's one that work, makes it work. Now, if you said to me, that it seems though that the Bay Area Black United has a very, very, uh, very deep spiritual roots. I would have agreed with that. Okay. Uh, but spirituality is a different issue than religion for me. Spirituality gets to the sense of, you know, we are all, uh, our organizations are in some ways the glue that holds our, our community together, for better or for worse. And if we're going to have healthy community, we need to have healthy organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, we are a very spiritually rooted people. Uh, I think that uh, we try hard to make sure that we look at the issues in our community from a very holistic way, that we're honest with ourselves, that we raise the right questions, that we, we take responsibility for convening, and when we do, we, we must make sure that we're, we're doing it for the right reasons as well as to answer the, ask the right questions uh, so that out of that process we, we get communities' response to the issues, the issues we face, not what the PhD might say or the clinician might say, but what does the community say about what our needs are and what solutions come out of, out of community that we can have faith that if we bring the right resources to task, uh, the community has, uh, has the opportunity and the will to heal itself. One of the discussions that I have and one of the statements I end with in terms of vision is vision is the art of seeing things yet unseen. In the case of an organization, it defines uh, what the, the organization is about, uh, how it's created. The vision is the target. How do you see the vision of the Barry Black United Fund under your leadership and, and, and under your watch? Well, I think the, our biggest challenge is uh, bringing value added that the community that we purport to serve sees us as bringing value added to the community. And we have to do that in real and very tangible terms. Like, uh, for example, as you know, we've been very much involved in looking at uh, health inequities in the African American community and addressing those through what we call critical mass health conductors, or addressing that through providing an opportunity every other year for uh, African American leadership and the community to look at our health issues and holding our feet to the fire to move ahead with addressing some of those issues. Mm -hmm. We have to demonstrate that we have the capacity to do that, mm -hmm. to convene uh, a, a whole lot of people to bring each Your partners, summit into in other words. our partners. Yeah, yeah. They, they look to us to convene, mm -hmm. to bring them together, to have those discussions, to bring the resources to the table. And believe me, it's, it's, a, it's a tremendous responsibility to bring those resources to the table. We're talking about money. One of the reasons that we want you to come on is to talk and, about- And volunteers, yeah, I'm course. sorry, money and people. Uh, we want you to talk about the needs of the organization in terms of volunteers, in terms of economic resources. And we would hope that people would call, would try to, again, get involved with what I think is a renaissance in the very Black United Fund. I've been very impressed. You know, the program, the health conductors program, the discussion on health uh, uh, disparities, and even the, the, the black paper, which I would want you to talk a little bit about in terms of discussions about moving us forward in that vision, in that mission. Mm -hmm. um, the black paper, would you tell us a little bit about how that evolved and, and what was the discussion around that? When we did the first 2003 summit, we, the planning committee realized that we could not approach it as a special event. It was a special event. It happened over two days, a Friday and a Saturday, uh, a conference on Friday and an expo, expo on, on Saturday. Uh, but when you looked at all the resources that were brought to bear, both volunteer leadership, uh, the uh, financial re uh, uh, obligation to pay all the bills associated with it, 
uh, you could think of, well, why would we do that? And we began to understand that we needed to look at and view the summit, the African American Health Summit, as a way of bringing the community together to have focused conversation around what our issues are and to make for that community of people, group of people for those two days, to make some recommendations on how we need to move forward uh, in, in terms of self-help. Self so we used it as a way of doing community research. And that black paper was a, a, uh, a product of doing community research. Now, I also want you to talk a little bit, again, about the idea of philanthropy. Uh, you are the only organization that is philanthropic in its, its goals and mission. Could you talk a little, a little bit about that and how you've accomplished that goal and, and what your vision is for the future with that? Uh, yeah, I will, George. But I want to sit, mention that we've just completed the 2000 five summit and there will be a black paper that comes out of the 2005 summit it probably will be ready available for the public in this in september mm -hmm. and i want to make sure that we we okay. mention that and again if you get any of this information is available on the web page uh, uh please uh, uh use it please entertain it get involved in, in a dialogue with the barry black man Fund. i think it's one of the organizations that we need to be about um you want to get back to your question yes. around you there there are there are many uh, African-American organizations that have been involved in giving back to the community that have been throughout our history from the 1700s on. We have had to um, uh, find ways to give back to the commu community that we've from because in many ways it's, it, 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 uh, it meant whether we survived or we didn't. Uh, sororities, fraternities, black uh, employee associations, uh, professional black professional associations, many of them in the Bay Area, uh, you know, do give scholarships to students, give small grants to small nonprofit organizations. We've been doing that a lot. Okay. Uh, but I think in this day and age, we really also, given the chronic needs that our community faces, and also given the fact that, you know, we have uh, we're we're we have to rely on our own resources and our own. Uh, ability to solve our problems because we do not get the kind of state, uh, the kind of uh, uh, local and foundation support as we used to in the past, that it, it, it begs that we rely more on our own resources to, to address some of these issues. And I think we have to think of philanthropy or giving back in a new way. We have to think smarter. One of the things that Bay Area Black United Fund is doing, for example, is we're developing institutional partnerships. We last week had a dinner where we invited the leadership of many black organizations to the table to say, we need to join together and find a way to strengthen uh, black philanthropy in our own community and then begin to also talk, uh, channel the resources that we bring to the table to address uh, community needs as a collective, not just as the Bay Area Black United sure. Fund, but as a collective of, of black organizations. What do you think are the core values now that you've taken over the helm of, uh, as the executive director of the Barry Black United Fund. What are the core values now and what would you like to, to see more of in the future? I have been very fortunate uh, to be able to bring together uh, staff, each of which is very committed to working in the black community and recognizes and sees that really to be, to be involved in the Barry Black United Fund as a staff person, to get paid for what we do is really an honor and a responsibility, and I don't take that lightly. Mm -hmm. Meaning, I, I'm in the position as executive director to bring resources to the table, to uh, be able to, uh, to conceptually think about vision and find ways through working with others to bring that about is a tremendous um, gift that I can't take lightly, uh, and I don't take lightly. Um, so I think that that's, that's very much at the heart of what we do. And th in other words, what I'm saying is that we as a staff really see that we are honored to be a part of the Bayer Black United Fund because, because we have the, 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 the challenge and the gift of working on community issues full time. We don't do it as something we can do after work uh, because we have another job to do. This is our work. Uh, we have the opportunity to, uh, to partner with um, with other institutions in the black community as well as outside. We've been very successful at raising, at generating resources at a time when philanthropy, uh, the competition, for example, for the foundation dollar is very, very keen, is very, very hard. And yet we've been able to do that. And I think in part because uh, we've been bringing value to the community and the community is beginning to see it. I had a chance to complete the uh, uh, 
Health Conductors Program. I became number 28. I, I know. Congratulations. Thank, thank you for, uh, Congratulations. for, again, it was exciting. I uh, wanted to say a special thank you to Joyce, who was my partner uh, in uh, our journey, mm. and all those that journeyed in. I want to congratulate them as being health conductors. Uh, the primary person... Can I ask you a question? Sure. Why did you, why did you join that, and what did you get out of it? I thought it was important. I feel that whenever organizations like ours uh, make a call to the community, we need to answer that. We need to put our money where our mouth's at. And one of the discussions with you and I was the fact that I need to complete this program, mm -hmm. program before I would have you on the show because I needed to understand what this mm -hmm. was about. Mm -hmm. And so it was a personal uh, piece for me and it became, a, again, a spiritual and, a, again, a, a revisiting in the community, which I always try to do. Um, uh, I want you to tell us about how Harry Tubman was, was picked as the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the first conductor. And you were, again, one of the members of the first conductor group, which is exciting that, again, not only do you walk to walk, you talk to walk, you do it. And that's very important, I think, as a leader in terms of leadership. I appreciate that. I try to every day. It's always <laughs> a, a challenge, yeah. but I try the best I can. Uh, you know, I would like to say that we chose Harriet Tubman, but I'd, I, I think it's probably fair to say that Harriet Tubman chose us. Uh, the, the, what we have is a council of elders that is the steering committee, so to speak, for what is now called the Bay Area African American Health Initiative. And Kaiser Permanente is uh, represented on that committee, uh, City and County of San Francisco Public Health Department, Alameda County Public Health Department, Berkeley Public Health Department, about 24 nonprofit organizations, including the uh, YMC, the East Bay, uh, community health, uh, complementary healers, holistic health providers. Uh, uh, many people are on that committee. We have a, a quarterly retreat. Mm -hmm. And at one of those retreats that we had in terms of looking at how do we move the work and energy that we've done at the summit, the 2003 summit, into the community, uh, we had a retreat. And the two facilitators who facilitated our, our conversation during that day kept mentioning Harriet Tubman. And at the end of the day, when we were asked to, you know, to, to look back at the day and how it was for us, what we discovered was that they did not plan, the two facilitators had not planned to bring Harriet Tubman, her life and work, into, the, into our conversation. It just happened. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, someone said, and I don't remember who it was, to say, Harriet Tubman just wants to be here. Mm -hmm. And um, the second comment after that was, let's adopt Harriet Tubman. She's our patron saint. So as you know, uh, George, being uh, one of the critical mass health conductors, every conductor gets a number. Mm -hmm. Harriet Tubman's number is number one. My number is number two. And by the way, I didn't select my number number two. <laughs> As yeah, you know, you have all you have these numbers in an in a, in a envelope, a little envelope. Yeah. I picked number two. I, and I see the ceremony was, was elaborate and rich in the context of, of the feeling and the spirit that was there. And I, I think it's an experience that everyone should go through. Mm -hmm. And this is a learning process. We develop and growing. And as organizations do, they yeah. learn, they grow. Yeah. A learning organization creates these kinds of environments for people to grow and learn. Um, we're almost winding down, but I wanted to say that, you know, some of the discussions around leadership now, uh, for the new leadership, for those that are running learning organizations, acknowledging and sharing uncertainty, and embracing uh, uh, era, uh, responding to the future, and becoming interpersonally uh, uh, competent and also gaining knowledge. I think you show those kinds of issues and, and live them every day. Um, what do you think now, as uh, in the leadership helm, will be your charge uh, as past, present, future? Well, one of the things that we're doing as it relates to addressing African-American health issues to create a community that thinks less of, be, of sickness and more on community health and wellness is to grow, as you know, critical mass health conductors. And we are committed through, through 2009 to have 4,650 uh, volunteers in the community that model healthy lifestyles. And so uh, that's, a big, that's a big challenge and a big task for us. Our next training for critical mass health conductors starts in August. I think you'll probably see it on your screen, screen for visitors, who, for viewers who, who uh, are looking at the program. We'd love to see you uh, at, that, uh, at the training, at the orientation, which is on August 1st. Um, but I think that's a big piece for us. The other piece for us, which we're developing now and looking at, is how can we support our youth? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, how can we support them, especially in becoming those who don't go to college to either become entrepreneurs in the community or to work and, 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 and acquire skills to, be, to, 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 uh, to go to a training school. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're currently doing the planning and the research right now to figure out what, how can we position ourselves to be able to be supportive of especially African American youth. Definitely the organization, Barry Black and United Fund, has been a stalwart in the community. Discussion around food, clothing, and shelter, economics, education are primary, and not only embracing and understanding the past and moving toward the future. Uh, again, if vision is the art of seeing things yet unseen, then uh, Dr. Carter, you truly are a visionary. We want to thank you for coming on the show today, and we look forward to you coming back again and having some more discussion around the Barry Black and Eye Fund. George, I thank you for letting me come to the show, for inviting <laughs> me. Uh, I certainly would be willing to come back. Uh, I think the, the, the format of the show is wonderful. It's a short period of time. We probably could find a wealth of things to talk about which would allow us to kind of peel the onion and get deeper and deeper into the conversation in any area that you would like to move okay. in. I'm certainly willing to do that. Web page, uh, please, Barry Black and I Fund. Uh, please get involved with the organization. Uh, we want to, again, thank uh, Dr. Carter for coming on and we wish him well in future uh, uh, endeavors. And, and I wish you well, young man. Thank you, Dr. Carr. Okay. Um,